Hey, what's going on guys? Um, I guess uh, putting it all out there again here on a video, but uh, you know, going over this morning's workout, um, it was one of the best workouts um, and probably one of the most effortless workouts I've done in quite some time, especially it being leg day. And uh, here's why. So as you guys know, you know what I mean? I work on myself as well and my mental health, as long as my physical, I think mind and body work together. You know, whatever the mind projects is what you see physically, okay? And um, I learned a lot last night. Had one of those sessions and I, um, I guess, you know, the lifelong question of why, why I push myself and why I keep training so hard and really just push in, in every aspect of life, you know? It's not just here in the weight room, it's in business and in family and everything else, you know, just that relentless, no quit mentality that I have. Well, you know, might come as a shock, but I have to thank my dad. Um, he didn't mean to do that, but he did. It's what he created in me when I was a boy, you know, and I kind of remembered it and I, I didn't really put two and two together, but it was only me. It was never my siblings. You know, there'd be times where and I'm just a boy. I'm not even 10 years old. You know, I'm like in farm league and whatnot, doing baseball and just the basics. Well, long story short, you know, we'd be sitting there, maybe dinner time, whatever, sometimes even random times. And he would be like, Paul, you want to know why you suck? It's because you don't practice enough. You don't try. And I took that to heart. I was just a boy. And I, I, I took it literally. I, uh, I pushed myself and I trained and all that at practice, but you know, he was projecting his insecurities onto me. He was seeing the potential that I had and what I could become. And he wanted to belittle me and bring me down. Well, it became my fuel, a fuck you mentality. You know, and I asked my grandfather, like, how do I get better at hitting, you know? And he said he used to grab a stick and toss up, you know, limestone and whatnot. And, uh, you know, hit that around. Because you can hit a piece of limestone and sure as hell can hit a baseball. And he was right. You know, it moved me up. moved me up quick to number three, number four batter with a lot of that stuff. And even though I got better there, my father still said, you suck. You suck because you don't try. You don't train. And, um, again, take it to heart. And, uh, you know, I even did tennis, you know. I remember my mom had me in lessons, and so I would go down and hit tennis balls off the basement wall as hard as I could. And I'd just keep going and going and going and going and going until I was exhausted. Then we eventually got a pitching machine, and I threw the ball and threw the ball and threw the ball until I was exhausted. And then, you know, um, I'd run sprints, I'd run hills. I... Just had this relentless mentality. It was a bad mentality then. It was a fuck you mentality. It was my rocket fuel. Yeah, it gets you far, but it only gets you so far until, you know, the rocket explodes. And, you know, it's it's crazy looking back at it because you'd always ask yourself, why? Why am I this way? Why am I so different? And you, you want to be like everybody else, but you know you're different. And at one point in time, I, I tried to be something I wasn't. You know, which I'm sure we all we all do. And uh, I had to come back to reality at some point in time um, in my early to mid 20s that, you know, these people aren't good for you, Paul. You're being something that you're not. You, you need to go and do what makes you happy. And then that's when I started to learn that I need to do this for me. It's, you know, to be stronger, but better than myself better than I was yesterday, better than I was last week, better than what I was 10 years ago. And ignoring him, ignoring that voice, and until that was mentioned to me last night, I didn't really know, and it felt like another weight was lifted off my shoulders. Every time we hit these milestones, I feel light. I feel so light on my feet. It's crazy. And I come in, and I only got maybe three hours of sleep last night because my son had a fever, and we thought we were going to have to take him to Children's. Luckily, the fever broke. Everything's fine. And you think, like, you're going to come in and you're going to have a shitty training session. Well, I came in and I had a great one. 
And that wasn't because of the physical and mental exhaustion, it's because that weight was lifted off my shoulders because I discovered why I am what I am. I am a product of my environment. I am what my dad made me, but I am what he feared the most. And that was potential. He never reached his potential, he never tried. So when he told me I sucked, he told me I was no good, he told me I wasn't smart, he told me I was small, and all this other stuff, I believed him. But now I don't believe him. I believe that he saw the potential in me. He saw what I was going to become. He saw that I was going to be better than what he was or could ever be. And instead of encouraging me and instead of pushing me in the right direction and being a father, he was a narcissist. He was a bully. But I made a series of choices. You know, they weren't the best. They were more of a fuck you. I'm going to do this to prove you wrong. And it became a I'm going to prove you everyone wrong mentality, which was a good choice, but not a great choice. The great choice is ignoring the naysayers and ignoring the critics and doing it because you love to do it, because you want to do it, doing it because it makes you happy and you're helping others along the way, you know, uh, it's just like that saying says, you know, weak men create hard times, strong men create good times. So, you know, I want to say that I'm trying to be a strong man. And now that I have a boy, it's time to be what my father wasn't, and I'm not him. I know that now. I made the choices, and I did the right, which was hard. But now I see this young man's strength and determination and just relentless mentality, and he's only one years old, and I'm encouraging him. You know, I live my life. I'm still doing the best that I can. And it's just, he's got his own life. And I think us as parents out there need to understand that. We can't live through our kids. I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish and I lived a lot of life. Great one, you know, ups and downs just like everybody else. But now that that weight's lifted off my shoulders, I feel like I can be even better yet now. You know, I didn't figure it out forever ago, but at least I figured it out now. Better late than never, right? But, you know, I'll, I'll end the rant. Um, I know I'm putting myself out there again. Um, it's hard to do that, but I know there are a few of you that listen out there. And I appreciate you guys that listen. And you, for you out there needing this motivation and needing to experience and hear of my experiences, um, I hope it helps. I hope it really, really helps you make the right decisions they will be hard. There's nothing easy. Nothing great comes easy. We must venture out of the comfort zone to chase our success and our greatness. And we're all capable, very capable. It's just you have to make the choice. I made my choices. You can make yours too. Well, I hope the video helps you guys. And obviously you guys know where to reach me. Feel free to reach out. And if there's anything you want to hear, you want to listen to, you want to see, please feel free. Like I said, Thanks for watching, you guys.